all of the melee setups that Enlight can run, but they're not going to. They're going to be running with the Rogue Mage Druid, and Enlight's actually going to be running the Discipline Priest and an off-brand melee composition. This is... <laughs> what are those three combinations of specializations doing on the same team in the same game? Retribution Paladin, Feral I Druid, Discipline Priest. Those are probably the three least popular specializations. All of the same team. Yeah. Maybe you put all, all of them together, <laughs> they work out in the miracle. We'll have to see. There's a sap on Zuniaki. Kara seems to be the target of choice for now, but not too much burst damage coming in from Chalky Milkman. Gelu, kind of famously known in the spring season for playing that Fire Mage, is going to be making some adaptations. Now playing that Frost Specialization. I have to say that's a, a lot more meta right now, a lot more popular, and I think it's an intelligent decision to switch up to Frost, especially going up against this Retribution Paladin Feral Druid. Kara is actually a BlizzCon champion. He was the fourth member of Diabolus, formerly ABC, so he's joined up with N Light coming out of retirement to play with some friends in the tournament and see what he can get done on the Retribution Paladin. In. Currently, his Avenging Wrath is basically totally shut down, and he didn't get any ice blocks or any major defensive cooldowns with it. So his team is going to be playing from behind. It's up to Zuniaki to maintain the mana, and he can do that using Penance and Power Word Solace. Those are very mana efficient, whereas Shadow Mend, if we see Shadow Mend, that's a very expensive heal, and we'll put Zuniaki behind in terms of mana. So definitely pay attention to his cast bars. What spells is he using? Is he only focusing on the Penances, or is he going for Shadow Mends? Right now, he's in a situation where he may have to. Car is so low on health, relying on the Power Word Barrier, but Cycloned at low health. Zuniaki master spells the Cyclone so he can heal Kara with Penance, then looks for Shadow Man, but gets blinded. No preemptive premonition there. Gets bopped out of it. Blessing and Protection removes physical abilities, including crowd control like blind. So good usage of that utility from Kara, getting Zuniaki back into the fight as soon as possible. Things were looking dicey, but Gelu gets further crowd control with the Polymorph. Kara activates the Shield of Vengeance, which is absorbing some damage, and when it finishes, it explodes for damage and could put Gelu behind as we see that damage following through now. Cyclone on the Temporal Shield. Shield. Not going to be landed by Cassidy, unfortunately, for him. Temporal Shield brings Gelu back to full health. Counterspell on Zuniaki. Kara even lower on health. Likely a Divine Shield. Zuniaki just unable to heal. Crowd controlled for an extended period of time, and Divine Shield is forced. They do get a cheeky hibernate on Clyde. Potentially Whoa. ice block as a result. Cassidy keeps his team in the game. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what the win condition for N Light currently is. The only thing I can really see is just a random one shot on Gelu. The consistent damage, the consistent crowd control in favor of Chalky Milkman in this matchup. Kara, he's burned through everything. He has no more defensive cooldowns. The Avenging Wrath gets popped. They want to try to take down Gelu in that small hypothermia cooldown or window where he can't activate that second ice block. But a smoke bomb, big burst damage coming in from the Chalky Milkman. Kara does manage to hold on. Zuniaki with some heads up heals, does manage to keep him stable and alive. But in midfield, the Retribution Paladin. He can't get a lot done. He's going to get snared up. Clyde's going to be able to free cast Cyclones when he really needs to. Gel is going to be able to free cast Frostbolt. And this is where Kara basically has to retreat to the pillar once again, looking like he wants to get a little bit aggressive in this situation. Clyde getting cycloned up there by Cassidy. Good crowd control, but Chalky Milkman have completely stabilized. And in this situation, right now, Chalky Milkman, they are way ahead. Mana is equal, but cooldowns are not. Chalky Milkman in the lead in that regard, if they can get any crowd control. Gelu is looking for it. Zuniaki runs into the Frozen Orb, so Polymorph will break. Gelu can't go for it. They go for Blind instead, but Kara can remove it. Now Cyclone secured. Clyde gets the game-winning crowd control here, potentially, if they can continue it. They drop the chain. The powered barrier is protecting Kara, reducing a lot of damage in its shielding effect, but it is now over. Kara is going to be alone. Zunyaki needs to connect some big heals, but That's he's it. in a polymorph, and that polymorph That's should it. easily be the end of the game as a Gladiator's Maledict flies in, absorbing the last Ooh. heal. No, Kara holds on by a thread. Cassidy once again carrying the team, cycloning up Ratcher, interrupting Clyde Cyclone. Cassidy single-handedly is defensively carrying the team and offensively setting up at least some opportunities as they try to cling together with this three misfit specialization composition that likely doesn't have a name, and you guys at home <laughs> should probably try to think of one because I'm struggling. 
Is in Yaki now into a blind. There's no blessing of protection available into the full polymorph. Kara once again in a lot of trouble. Frozen Orb gets dropped out. Is there any more crowd control in Zuniaki? Luckily, Kara, he gets behind the pillar. He's going to be healing himself up. And that's one thing that Enlight's composition has is a lot of off fields. The Retribution Paladin, as well as the Feral Druid, do have that as one of their main utilities. They can assist Zuniaki with some healing. So when he does fall behind, he is caught in crowd control. They can try to keep themselves up. And it looks like right now Kara is actually going to be marching into midfield with that Avenging Wrath, looking to get aggressive onto Gelu. Gelu blinks away, and it's just so difficult. If he blinks away from Kara, back to the safety of Clyde, it's, I don't really think Kara can chase, and that's why I just feel like their win condition is so limited in this matchup. All right, Cassidy cycling up Gelu. Hammer Justice on Rasher, but can be dispelled by Clyde, so we shouldn't see too much momentum, but the damage added in by Zuniaki is quite a big punch. Mana is surprisingly equal as we enter Dampening, Paint suppression available. Zuniaki has to cast some Shadow Men's. Puts them still actually even. Very surprising. Clyde looking for Hibernates on Cassidy. Cassidy vice versa. But when Cassidy dodges Hibernate, he opens himself up to Polymorph, which is why we've seen Cassidy actually Polymorphed even as a Feral Druid. So Clyde and Gelo focusing on that utility. Now switching targets, going after Cassidy, who was trying to push forward to stop Clyde from drinking and has now managed to, but he got at least some amount of mana for a lead. Cassidy sets up crowd control. A double stun combo looks solid here from Charles. Milkman that forces Glide to use his Clyde to use his Glyrus Medallion to get out, but now Ratcher is cycloned on Iron Bark's defense. Cassidy is playing very well in this matchup, although compositionally I think they're just so held back that there's not much that he can really do, even with these stellar crowd control setups. Yeah, but for Cassidy, he's kind of left alone in this match. He can kind of do whatever he wants. Gelu is really focusing on moving in, getting the crowd control on Zuniaki. Now Cassidy, once again, landing a Cyclone over on the Clyde. Ratcher preemptively with the feint, with the evasion, looking to reduce a lot of that incoming damage. There's a full kidney shot. And it looks like Zuniaki will be throwing out that power ward barrier. You can see some of that glowy shield on the ground. It's a huge cooldown that Discipline Priest has. It limits a lot of the offensive capabilities of the enemy team. And Zuniaki actually will be looking to sit down for a drink. Gelu does deny. Now Kara still in a little bit of trouble, but Ratcher in a Cyclone. I don't think this is the moment where they actually close out the game. Not just yet. Clyde is crowd controlled by Cassidy, but Kara is still in trouble. Cassidy's trying to save him. He cyclones Ratcher, but Ratcher trinkets to get the sap, and that could be the game winning play if Kara doesn't respect it. Trades out Divine Shield. Came up just in the nick of time. Car is now immune to damage and potentially has an opportunity for a comeback. He comes out swinging after Ratcher. Ratcher shadow steps away from the big attack there from Kara. Well done defensively. Ratcher avoids a near-death experience, although having used his Gyrus Medallion to get a Cyclone means he gets stuck in the next stun. I actually think if Kara and Cassidy can get crowd control on Ratcher and Clyde at the same time, they can actually kill Ratcher very quickly. See if they can set it up. They're spending some time on Gelo. I don't really like it. I don't like that Hammer of Justice at all on Ratcher. It was maybe preemptively a defensive play. Kara's caught in the smoke bomb. Zuniaki can't heal him through that line of sight, but he doesn't go down in it and is able to pull back. Gelu blinks in, secures a polymorph. Premonition from Zuniaki breaks the polymorph. Now his team can get aggressive. Cassidy setting up for the game-winning crowd control. He's got Clyde bashed. He's got him Cyclone. But if they had the Hammer of Justice here for Ratcher, they could hold him in place, and they don't because they sort of blundered it away earlier. That could have been the game-winning moment for their team, and now it's lost. Zuniaki's almost completely out of mana. Clyde still has some remaining, and at this point, Enlight need a miracle. Maybe this is it. They can just do it with pressure. Ratcher is very low. Cloak of Shadow saves him, but overlapped with the Iron Bark. So there's a bit of a panic moment for Chalky Milkmen as both teams are running very low on cooldowns. Yeah, definitely a scary moment for both these teams as we enter 20% dampening. Clyde was able to sit down and get a little bit of mana back and recover. Zuniaki, unfortunately, not the same luxury for him. He's going to be hovering at around 5%. Could try to sneak away for a drink at some point, but I think Gelu is on point right now, making sure to deny. But no, Zuniaki does recover some mana, and this is actually really good for Enlight. The stall-based tactic with the Feral Druid, the Retribution Paladin, and the Discipline Priest. Can they actually pull it off and get a win? Kara, once again, sort of forced to retreat to the pillars. Zuniaki just caught an endless crowd control, it feels like. Polymorph into Polymorph into a Cyclone. Kara left in a 3v1 situation. Cassidy actually backs him up with a nice Cyclone, denying Gelu's follow-up damage and control. But Kara, he just doesn't have the healing at this point, dampening to keep himself alive. Zuniaki running into the Frozen Orb, denies any follow-up crowd control and interrupt onto the master spell. The Cyclone on Akara 
And Zuniaki just really struggling to top off his team. They have to kill Ratcher, I would say, in the next minute or so, but maybe they can. Kara's got an increase of damage with Avenging Wrath activated. Ratcher respects that cooldown, avoids it by running around the corner and away from Kara. Instead, now we see Cassidy and Kara maybe switch to Gello. Gello keeping some good space, not running into that aggressive cooldown that Kara has activated. Doesn't want to take too much free damage. Zuniaki charging across the map, maybe to try and avoid crowd control, but now caught in a full blind. No way out of that blind. What are you going to do, Kara? Shield of Vengeance. This absorption effect, really the last line of defense. I do not think that it's going to be enough, but maybe he just cross kills Ratcher. He is going to fall first. Chalky Milkmen take game one. See, maybe on paper. Maybe on paper they've got... Uh, good, paper's they've got, out the window with this one. <laughs> decent instant crowd control, the necrotic strike to stack up some healing absorption. They've got the purges from the Restoration Shaman. If they can avoid being crowd controlled and stay on target, then maybe they can make this work. It's definitely the first time we're going to get to see it. Clyde actually gets bounced out of the pipe <laughs> early on. He didn't jump down in time. They could just kill him in the opener as a mis Whoa. result of that mistake. Clyde jumps to safety thanks to Gellu's Frost Nova onto the entire team. He is going to survive. Now Kara on the back foot, although Zinyaki disrupts the crowd control, so Tana can easily save him. What is Kara going to do? Grappling hooks up to Gellu. Gellu activates Temporal Shield, so he's absorbing all these damage points, and he's going to heal them all back right at the end of it. So good timing there, anticipating big hits due to the gap closer usage of Kara, but he's still actually taking quite a beating. Blinking back to try and eat the freezing trap, but was unable to. Blinking away from the death grip once again, shadow melding the gladiator's maledict. Good defensive attempt so far from Gellu, and is able to easily hold on to ice blocks. Kara now on the back foot. Tana looks to stabilize with Earthen Wall totem down. Kara should feel stable to move forward. Gelu has run out of blinks, so he can't blink out of that defense. He's just slowly waddling away in the chains of ice. I want to see the next freezing trap. If they can get an ice block with the next freezing trap, then this composition is actually very promising. Yeah, the Survival Hunter has really good utility, too, with that mending bandage. Whenever he uses that, the target he uses it on is completely cleared of bleed effects. So that is sort of a soft counter to Ratcher on Ooh. that assassination rogue. Beautiful. Whenever there's crowd control on Tana, Kara can sort of back up his team with that mending bandage, really limiting the damage Shocky Milkman has available on that short crowd control window. Ratcher defensively shadow stepped back to Clyde and ate the incoming freezing trap from Kara. And they need those freezing traps to secure ice blocks. That's their main crowd control source for the healer Clyde. So if Gelu and Ratcher can use their mobility to break that crowd control chain, they're almost certainly never going to get an ice block. We see Clyde stunned. This is where we would anticipate a freezing trap, but Kara's out of position and falling behind. Zuniaki is low on health as well. Tanis trinkets out of a blind. Does he get any follow-up? Kara moves in, gets a freezing trap. They need an ice block, but they're not able to connect. Gelu has them frost nova around the corner. They're unable to pressure. They're forced to switch targets and go after Ratcher. They don't want to be attacking him. They fall even further behind now on mana. Things are falling apart for N Light, even though this composition proved to be promising. The play of Chalky Milkman shutting him down. Full stun. Spearling totem forced from Tan. The entire team under pressure right now from the Chalky Milkmen. Some decent counter aggression finally on Gelu. Ratcher looking to shadow step for the freezing trap, but Kara isn't throwing it. Maybe he's trying to bait the shadow step with that attempt, but either way, they don't get it. Oh, Kara has no. to lose the aspect of the turtle. He's so low on health. Tana has to open his schools of magic to interrupt, and he does get interrupted instantly by Ratcher. Now into a stun, setting up Clyde for Cyclone and Polymorph. They interrupt Cyclone, but they can't stop both. Kara's all on his own at this point. How is he going to survive? He defensively tries the road, but that is not going to be enough, and Chalky Milkman's defense looks unbreakable in game. Could potentially shift the tides here in N Light's favor. Yeah, I mean, we have to see how it goes. Like, I, I've got some bakers on my desk right now. Maybe they can rustle up some food, that's all I'm thinking about for this one. But we do have game three, potentially match point and elimination point here for N Light if Chalky Milkman can secure it against another Red Feral composition here. Yeah, I think the main problem with the composition N Light has is this is so difficult for Kara to really just get off that pillar, get aggressive. Whenever they do find momentum and damage, Geller's able to just run into the open to the safety of Clyde, those cyclones, and then it's not no longer a favorable trade. Kara's going to run over, get the Hammer of Justice over on the Clyde. That's going to be followed up by a Cyclone. Nice Shadow Step kick there by Ratcher. Does deny. Hibernate going to be cast out onto Cassidy into his sheep, into another sheep. Nice control here coming in from Clyde, uh, Clyde and Gelu. Although the, the initiation by Enlight was solid, they got a main objective, Ratcher's Glider's Medallion with that first stun lock. And if they can coordinate crowd control on Clyde at the same time as Ratcher, then killing the Rogue is certainly a viable strategy. And bringing in the Shaman allows them to prevent Gelu from disrupting 
disrupting that attempt. They can use Wind Shear and Grounding Totem to prevent Gelu from using Polymorph to save his rogue. So Tan is in position to stop Polymorph. He gets fake casted though on it. He has to use the Grounding Totem, and now Grounding Totem and Wind Shear aren't available, so Gelu's gonna blink over and pressure Tana. He lands the full Polymorph. Good play on Gelu's part, activating that Glyre's Maledict now for the team, but Cyclone by Cassidy equally shut down. Once again, solid play from Cassidy. Tana in a blind. Not surprising to see him break out of it immediately with that Gladiator's Medallion. Clyde with Gello on the outside, waiting for those diminishing returns for a big push. They may even wait for Ratcher to have his Glider's Medallion available before making another push, as that could be a point of vulnerability, a weak point on the team right now. Clyde is interrupted, unable to heal, but there's nothing out of that. So it's Tana who's actually in trouble with in a Polymorph and Kara at low health. If he's interrupted on a flash of light, he will not be able to use Divine Shield. So Kara is taking a risky gamble right now and is no longer going to be gambling it away. Trades the Divine Shield, stays alive, activating the Avenging Wrath with the Hammer of Reckoning, looking for a push. Ratcher immediately retreats back defensively. The Faint Active reduces damage and basically isn't scratched from that attempt. Once again, Chalky Milkman navigating both offense and defense perfectly. And I almost want to see Chalky Milkman go head to head with Diabolus in a Rogue Mage Mirror with how they're playing today. Yeah, I think that would be excellent to see. I mean, both these teams seem to be doing excellent. It seems like Enlight, they don't really have a solid answer. Them changing up their composition every single game tells me that they don't really have just one thing that works. I think they're just trying to get sort of surprise victories, surprise points in the series against the Chalky Milkman. But Chalky Milkman with the Rogue Mage Druid is just such a durable, well-rounded composition that if you can play it at a very high level, not only does it have impeccable defense with the amount of defensive cooldowns it has as control, and it also has a lot of offensive capabilities with that same control, with that same burst damage. Right now, Rash in a little bit of trouble. Rake Stun does come in from Cassidy into the Mame Stun. He has to trink it out. That's a small victory there for N Light, as it does appear Rapture is the main target in this matchup. I was going to criticize N Light for their lack of coordination, but they make up for it with brute force, forcing the hand of Clyde, Iron Bark, and Cloak of Shadows. So Rapture's defense is even more limited right now. We see him trying to get away to safety, but he's currently stunned, unable to move. Clyde lines up some big heals. I do think that Tana needs to reposition during these attempts to either Wincher Clyde on heals or Gelu on polymorphs so that Kara and Cassie can push forward for the kill. If Tana can't find a moment to push forward and get his utility utilized aggressively, I'm not sure if they're going to have enough potency to take them down, and they could easily be 3-0'd. Tana in a Cyclone, and Kara once again in trouble. Shield of Vengeance absorbs some hits for now, but that is a lot of damage, and Tana is going to fully respect it, dropping down the Spirit Link Totem, reconnecting the health of the team, and staying alive for now. But these are very powerful cooldowns that are unlikely to be seen again in the fight, so they're only getting this choice once, and every time they blow through them, they're one more away from defeat. They're on match point, and they face tournament elimination. Yeah, Gelu blinks in. Kara looking to get aggressive, but he gets caught into a kidney shot. Gelu now into a bash. Cassidy looking to deny. Cheap shot coming in from Ratcher. He knows they have to stop Cassidy. If Cassidy is able to just do whatever he wants with Cyclones, it's almost impossible for Ch Chalky Milkman to actually secure a kill. So they have to get these off stuns or a counter spell onto Cassidy during these burst moments, which is difficult because now you have to sort of control both the Feral Druid and the Restoration Shaman, as well as that Retribution Paladin, all three members at once. But Chalky Milkman. And they can obviously get that done. Ratcher now in a little bit of trouble. Iron Bark is committed by Clyde. If we look at mana, this is one of the major advantages Enlight has with this composition with the Restoration Shaman is if Clyde is unable to drink in this matchup, which he hasn't been able to do so far, Enlight will, of course, secure the late game advantage in terms of mana. So they can stay on point with that. They could swing this matchup in their favor. Yeah, if they just maximize their damage output, that's certainly one way for Enlight to win is to run Clyde out of resources and prevent him from healing. If he has no mana, he just can't heal anymore. So it's definitely a strategy that it appears to be Enlight's only option at this point. Can they do it? Can they stay alive long enough? Are the Chalky Milkman going to overrun them with crowd control? If we look at the defensive options for Enlight to deny kills, they actually have a lot again. They've survived long enough for Kara to have access to the Divine Shield, which is key to his survival at any pinch moment. We do see Cassidy going for some, actually getting crowd controlled himself, but Ratcher's the one who's actually going down. Kara single-handedly getting defensive cooldowns from Ratcher. If Cassidy is able to connect alongside him, perhaps Enlight have the capabilities of a comeback. And definitely Clyde has to really focus on getting away, going for drinks. It's just Kara, you can see he has so many defensive cooldowns available right now. Still has that Divine Shield. 
Chalky Milkman, they are running on fumes at this point in the matchup, and I don't know what they're going to be able to do. Cassidy has just been doing such a good job running down Clyde, making sure he stays in combat, keeping up the pressure, not allowing him to really sneak away and get those drinks. Now securing a full Cyclone, Galu blinking in. Kara and Tana really showcasing the central pillar in this matchup quite a bit. I don't think Kara's left it for more than five seconds at a time. Just really wants to limit the amount of damage that Gelo is able to put out and avoid as much damage as possible. How much mana did Clyde end up getting there on that drink? May not matter. Kara is so low on health, but not that much. And I mean, Kara, if he just stays alive and Cassidy can keep Clyde in combat, this is certainly a way for them to win. But Gelu gets a potentially game-winning polymorph on Tana. Kara, again, takes a risky gamble, but there's actually no interrupts. He can freely cast Flash of Light. There is no gamble. Kara is stabilized, holds onto the Divine Shield, and likely holds onto the potential to find victory. But Clyde sits down for a drink, and they weren't in position to stop it. Clyde goes back to almost completely full mana. Looking at the cooldowns, there's more than enough options for Chalky Milkman, but I would say equally so for N Light. So at this point, it's still anyone's game. Maybe a slight favor to the Chalky Milkman, but if N Light can stay alive long enough to burn the mana bar down a second time, then they could still win through this strategy. Yeah, it definitely is an option for them. Gelu now into a Cyclone. Cassie's been on fire in the series so far, denying a lot of these setup potentials from Chalky Milkman. We're at 15% dampening right now, or about to enter 15% dampening. Clyde's mana has recovered. Now Chalky Milkman actually in a favorable situation in this matchup where they are ahead on mana. And I finally get off the with Kara. They realize they have to try to make something happen right now. There's a bit of pressure on Gelu, a bit of pressure on to Ratcher, but the main problem when you have the Retribution Paladin paired with the Feral Druid is they don't have healing reduction. They bring a oh. lot of burst damage, which can get those ice blocks, but the consistent pressure without that mortal wounds effect that an assassination rogue would bring, a warrior would bring, or a windwalker monk would bring just makes it so easy for Clyde to heal through a lot of this damage. Mm, Kara in a stun, Gelu looking for crowd control, trying to fake cast, doesn't need to as Ratcher sets him up beautifully with a cheap shot on Cassidy. So now Kara are likely to have to use the Divine Shield to survive. Moin ihr Lieben, ich bin Spin Zucker und ihr hört jetzt mein neues Album Wer sagt das? Und noch viele weitere schöne Schlagerhits hört ihr in der Playlist Herz über auf dieser. Viel Spaß dabei. Wer sagt, es ist falsch, auf sein Glück zu vertrauen? Wer sagt, man kann nicht nur auf Hoffnungen bauen? Wer sagt es? Wer sagt es? Is trying to just use Flash of Light, but is unable to only survive with its healing capabilities. Tana, no longer crowd controlled, can save the team. So the Trinket Spearling Totem of Tana is the last line of defense. Once the Chalky Milkmen get through that, there is nothing that will keep N Light alive in this tournament. So they are on a clock now to get a kill. Can they find it? Kara on the back foot gets stunned during his crowd control. This is devastating. It provides momentum for Ratcher and denies momentum from N Light. So good timing on Ratcher's stun. Ratcher now cycling at low health. Cassidy, once again, the MVP of the team, trying to create some openings or at least put some pressure on Clyde. But Ratcher actually stealths out of the Cyclone, and this allows him abilities like Cheap Shot and Grot. So that's well done from Ratcher. Gallo taking some big hits. We saw him get bursted down earlier on, so he definitely needs to keep his eyes open. Ooh. This is the Trinket. This is the Spirit Link Totem, and that's the last line of defense for End Light. They stay alive, but only for a few more seconds. When Tana is off, crowd control diminishing returns. I do anticipate that the Chalky Milkman will take this. Cassie gets a cycle and they have to get a kill here and now Gelu has to make mistakes will he he's down at half do they have any crowd control they get the hammer but it's on diminishing return Gelu crowd controls Cassidy on his cyclone cast with polymorph Gelu totally shutting out and light denying the second ice block force they're trying to go after Ratcher but they're just taking so much damage Gelu single handedly uh, carrying the fight right now with tons of pressure Chalky Milkmen are going to clean sweep in the lower bracket good feed versus the fake zebras we're all tied up one and one who is going to find themselves on match point who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament keep in mind folks we're doing a brand new thing you have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for azeroth 